Hi guys. Hi Amy. Um, so I like I have to talk about the music. The music in the show is amazing and what blows my mind are all of the huge big name artists who contributed music to the show. I mean David Bowie, Cindy Lauper, John Legend, Tom Kenny. And <laughs> I just want to know how involved some of the artists were in the production. Wow. Well, uh, Ethan could probably uh, answer that uh, better than me because it's part of the Broadway uh, uh, construct. You know, I, I know I know that with Best Day Ever, that was just a song that that my songwriting partner and I, Andy Paley, wrote. Really, not just for ourselves. Uh, uh, you know, way back in the two thousands. Uh, early 2000s because uh, we, we 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 wanted to write a song that was sort of like encapsulated SpongeBob's philosophy and way of of looking at the world, kind of like you know uh, like a loving spoonful. Do you believe in magic? You know, kind of like that. You know, like we we're like that's what it should be. So and then that song kind of kept winding up in different places. It wound up in an episode of the show. It wound up over the closing credits of the first SpongeBob movie. It wound up uh, you know in in theme park shows and commercials and and then and then it wound up uh, getting used in the broadway show so so that was that was how that song wound up in there but ethan you probably have more insight into uh the 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 the, the musical uh cherry picking of, of tina and everybody <laughs> you know, i have a little bit more insight maybe just because um <laughs> i remember the songs as they rolled in you know oh. i started working on it before there was any music and then uh although i will say that in the first workshop that we did, we learned Best Day Ever. I played it on ukulele and guitar. And, nice. You know, um, Danny was playing trombone and, you know, everyone was just like, <laughs> we didn't have a, you know, it was just this great sort of weird band and all of the music was, all the drums were done by Foley. It was awesome. Um, but, you know, the, I think what was really cool about it was I remember talking about the music before any of the artists gave songs and, and Tina Landau who directed the show and conceived of the stage production um, was saying, you know, like SpongeBob has the best like uh, scores. Like there's, there's always these amazing songs curated for the SpongeBob movies and for, you know, all of these things. Um, she's like, you know, Wilco, Weezer, Ween, um, anything else with a W that you can name, you know, the, those are the <laughs> ones. So she, she was like intent on finding cool artists who also were right for the moment. Um, and they were really specifically picked for those moments. Like it was, you know, we knew that there was going to be um, a really beautiful, soulful sort of love, uh, platonic love ballad between uh, SpongeBob and Patrick at I Guess I Miss You. Um, we knew that there was going to be, you know, the B BFF was going to be called BFF. You know, all these things were sort right. of known. That father-daughter song between Mr. Krabs and Pearl, right? Like like you guys knew where those those pins were stuck in the, the musical uh, bulletin board. Exactly. Wow. And, and well, I will say, Steve was a big music guy too, Steve Hillenberg was yeah. a big music guy and, and, and like listened to a lot of music, had really good taste in music or, or maybe the same bad taste that I do. I don't know. Uh, whenever somebody has the same taste you do, you think, you go, they have good taste, but maybe we just both had crappy taste. I don't think so. But, but, but he, uh, you know, him and I would go to see music shows a lot, you know, uh, uh, especially in the early days of SpongeBob before it got so crazy for him, uh, uh, including Bowie, like, like early, early on, like, like, you know, 2000, you know, him and I go to see Bowie, you know, uh, and, uh, uh, so I think that was really important to him as well, and I think the music chosen for the 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 show and and the the the, the various styles and stuff kind of does uh, reflect that panoply, that cornucopia of of, uh, of of styles. You know, Steve Steve was very uh, uh, Catholic, small C uh, small C Catholic in his uh, taste in in music. Hmm. You know, I, and I think he liked a lot of different stuff to, to speak again to like. Steve's influence on it when um, when uh, n all of these artists were like first choice artists they reached out to them thinking like ah you know they're not going to be available like John Legend's not going to be able to do this and everyone said yes because they love SpongeBob and they love the ethos of SpongeBob and they wanted to be a part of it and so everyone wrote original songs you know it was like this really amazing um, like show of love for the show and it, it I think it really shines through I think every song is pretty freaking great yeah it's and, and that that's a powerful uh, uh 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 you know very useful i should say uh aspect of spongebob is that it is something that people kind of want to 
work on and be uh, adjacent to, you know, so, so it's never really, you never really have to like twist anybody's arm super hard to do something on, on SpongeBob. They, you know, they like Sp SpongeBob, SpongeBob as a, as a property or whatever, just enjoys really uh, goodwill, a lot of goodwill out there in the world. So, so, so that's very, that's very helpful. Um, okay. So as somebody who has maybe like one funny voice that I don't even do that well, I'm always blown <laughs> away by people who are great at voices but especially somebody like you, Tom, who is so prolific and does so many well-known voices, how do you keep them all straight? You know, I, keeping them straight is 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 easier than than just uh, just kind of finding new stuff for your voice to do. You know, I mean, I I love auditioning. I I, I audition every day right, you know, right here right here in this room with this uh, this microphone here. Uh, uh, you know, just, and I, and I tell my agent, like, send me everything, the straightest, most boring stuff to the craziest, you know, I, member FDIC to the craziest cartoons you've ever heard in your life. Cause I like doing it all and just figuring it out. And, and, uh, you know, that, that's the fun part. It's really all I ever wanted to do. You know, I, I never like being a cartoon voice guy was my dream job as a, as a kid. It's not like someplace, something I arrived at after going after, you know, well, wow, I just wound up here, which a lot of voiceover people did. They were doing other stuff and then they go, wow, voiceover is cool. Maybe I'll just stay here. I was always like clawing my, trying to claw my way into voiceover, you know, and it was uh, the, the toughest nut for me to crack, you know, like harder than, than on camera and right and stand up and writing, like, like getting my nose under that voiceover tent was like took for uh, forever seemingly you know so so that you know I'm just, I'm just glad to be doing it. so I like thinking up all those different voices that's fun and then keeping them straight is the the voiceover director's job I'll let them do that <laughs> that's it well thank you thanks